Hello everybody, welcome to the Society for One Place Studies March Hangout on Air and today's topic is community mapping and I'm going to hand over to Kirsty Gray who's going to introduce this for us. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing I need to remember how to do is share my screen, which is always a good start. <laughs> so I'll share my screen with you and start a short presentation for this evening. So if we start from the top. Okay, so we're, can you see the screen on there? Because I only have I my slides. I see the screen, but I see your entire presentation. So you're going to go from the beginning? Well, I've only got a slide in front of me, so okay. Can you do view better? show? That's what I've just done on my own screen. Is no. that not what's showing on yours? No. We're seeing okay. the entire PowerPoint program. Okay. Let's try again. Well, I've I've just done it on my own screen. So if All I right. go from the beginning or from current slide, I've only got one slide on my screen at the moment. All right. So Are you sharing? It that way. One quick question. Are you sharing yeah. the right screen? from the screen share? That's the only question. Yep. Okay. Yep, I've undone it now. <laughs> but I will go back and I'll try okay. it again. I can screen share okay, but it doesn't seem to want to, to share the entire thing. So I think we'll just have to do it like that. They're quite big, so it shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. All right. So if I share it and just make the slide a little bit bigger, how's that? Okay. And then go back to screen sharing. The technology is always wonderful, isn't it? Let's try again. There we are. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Is that a little bit bigger? Yes. Wonderful. Okie dokes. I can even make the slide a little bit bigger there as well. There we are. Okay, so um, this evening's hangout, or this evening for me anyway, um, is about community mapping in your one place study. So um, I think we'll start sort of talking about maps. Obviously, maps have um, a wide range in applications across lots of different aspects of one place studies, um, from aids in locating particular individuals or places within a community to presenting data or investigations and results. Mapping is really an essential tool um, to create an image or an impression of your place at a particular point in time, or if you want to make a comparison, perhaps over the centuries. We're really fortunate nowadays not only to have lots of data online, but also to have lots of published maps, whether it's on paper or CD or, or online, as well as programs that can actually make uh, maps, so sort of self-production of maps. Uh, interactive um, online programs, I'm sure many of you are aware of things like street map and Google Maps and things like that. Along with historical gazetteers, we've got loads of resources now at our fingertips relating to places across the globe. So mapping, as I say, is a, is a really effective tool. It's a non-verbal way of finding out how people can view their area. Um, it's a good way to sort of gather and present site-specific data. Uh, understand differences in perception and stimulate debate if you've got a collaborative project. When I first started my one place study, um, I have two down in Devon, Tetcot and Luffincott, which are two parishes that are right next door to one another. In fact, the boundaries change, which is probably why I landed up doing both. <laughs> um, and I wondered how I would start mapping the place itself. It's quite a remote place down in, in Devon, on the, on the Devon Cornwall border. And initially I visited and took pictures of some of the buildings. Um, inherently when I go to Devon, I'm sure Janet will, uh, will concur with this, the weather usually lets us down, doesn't it? <laughs> so uh, the first mapping visit was pretty short-lived and rather wet. So if we just pop down there. So um, over time I sort of looked around the community and and got a feel for, for the streets, buildings and landmarks, which have changed quite a lot over time. It is very isolated. Um, my, my two parishes are very, very isolated. And although there was once a pub and a school and things like that, the buildings are still there, but they're not used for, for pubs or, or schools at all anymore. So as I say, over time I looked around the community to get a feel for those buildings, streets and landmarks and it was really important to me to have a, a firm grasp on, on my community before I started creating uh, a, a sort of a, a map of the location. 
So I chose the boundaries for my community map and just started on the street itself. So rather than looking at all the different farmyards and different masses of land, which there are quite a few, um, I started just mapping the streets and the, the actual properties that were on those streets. So the more area that you plan to include, the less de detail you can really include in your maps to start off with. So I began with a small area such as a road or a street or a small small um, small area of buildings um, and that allowed me to focus on on the fine details of the area so the beginnings of my community map came when I sat down with a local resident she basically accosted me and asked me why I was taking photographs of the houses in the in the village uh, but then when I told her what I was doing she was really extremely helpful and sat down with me and and helped me to draw out the detail of the area including the names of some of the properties which weren't always obvious um, and uh, we sat down over coffee in her front room and drew the details of the area so as I say the property names, street names, landmarks and those kind of things it was a, a pretty rudimentary sketch um, still is with a pencil <laughs> and, uh, and lots of bits of, uh, of A3 paper but she went through and she explained who lived in those properties and if she knew any of the history of the properties uh, in terms of the residents who'd lived there over the years she told me that as well. We had a really good key to the map so that we could we could rely on on its accuracy um, and I double checked with quite a few different property names because they weren't necessarily uh, as obvious as, uh, as some of the modern day names so uh, in, I, I made it so that the map could be used for people who didn't really know the area at all or people who perhaps had ancestors from there originally but had never visited so once we've mapped the main part of the village we moved the focus of the map from the, the dare I call it the village center it's not very big but from, from the center of the village outward and started looking at the farms naming the farms and so on there so as I say we, we produced a rather rudimentary sketch map of, of the place. My place as I mentioned is small, well minute actually. Um, in 1850 Tetcott had just 300 inhabitants although there's 1,885 acres of land. Uh, it decreases over the years to 207 in 1891 and it continued to decrease. It's actually only 165 residents in the 2011 census when you look at the Office for National Statistics, the Neighbourhood Statistics site. So using my sketch I can then pair that with some online maps and I found this, I know it's quite small but the arrow at the top there actually highlights something that I managed to tell Janet about the brawned one name study this week while I was preparing this because she didn't actually know there was a bronze copse very very close to Tetcott and uh, the bottom arrow is actually where Tetcott is um, and I'll zoom in on that in a moment but there's East Cot Wood, not quite East Lake Kim but East Cot so I did my best <laughs> So, uh, so some quite interesting names that obviously come from names of people um, for those areas. Just to zoom in a little bit more, that's the website that I've actually got it from at the bottom there, communitywalks.com. Um, and to zoom in a little bit more there, you can see just how small my, my place is. So you have Tetcott Parish Church in the middle. Tetcott Methodist Church and Tetcott Garage and that's all that is actually shown on there in terms of properties that are shown on the Community Walks website. So you can use any kind of online map to pair this with. There are, as I mentioned at the top, quite a few different options. Ordnance Survey, um, Community Walks is I think quite a new one. Um, so shortly after we set up the society, actually back in September, uh, we we were sort of talking about getting onto social media channels and things like that and actually at the top of my Twitter feed in early October I noticed a seminar in Bristol which was actually called Our Place. Um, it was a participation in heritage event, that was how it was how it was, uh, how it was pitched. It sounded right up our street, I'm oh, sorry, excuse, excuse that pun. It was too good an opportunity to miss and so I went along to find out a little bit more. So the Our Place study, uh, sorry, the Our Place project rather, um, has two sort of main aims. It's designed and managed by the British Historic Environment Record, uh, which is paired with the City Council's City Design Group. The project's funded actually by English, the English Heritage, 
and it's run in partnership with um, Richard Guise and James Webb. They're two designers who work with Context 4D, a company in Bristol. The project's got these two aims, to test a model approach that enables communities to identify and map the character of their local area and to embed local understanding of character and wide community engagement in any oh, any future. I've lost my, lost my screen now. I hope you've still got it. There we go. <laughs> wide community engagement in any future planning or design process. So to achieve that, they programmed a series of mapping events in a variety of locations and with quite diverse communities, some very built up in the centre of Bristol and some more rural on the, uh, on the outskirts. They developed a mapping technique which is based on some work that's been done by urban design students in their coursework. The, the uh, notation was actually in the, the current version of Destinations. So when I went along to the, to the seminar, we had the opportunity to undertake our own mapping activity in Bristol, an area I didn't particularly know, using the neighbourhood mapping notation and Richard kindly allowed us to put that in the destinations that we've just published. So what they've done as part of that project is established a common language, a sort of a, a spatial vocabulary. Um, and that's been one of the biggest successes of the project. It's transferable across the, the globe in any, in, in any place. Although the project has been based in Bristol, I asked where we could get base maps for our global communities and whether we could actually use their design program. Unfortunately, the latter doesn't seem at the moment to be, to be so possible, but they did give quite a lot of detailed information about how we could get hold of uh, the, the base maps that could be used. And there's going to be a full how-to guide, which again they've said we can share with society members. The the key thing, and I don't know if this translates into other countries, but certainly for the UK maps, is to ask for figure ground maps, which I'd not heard of before, which gives a, a one to five hundred scale. So it's very very high scale map, so you can see the fine fine detail of the area. Um, so anyway, I think that's probably um, enough from me, and I've got a couple of questions and considerations that we might want to talk about during today's Hangout. Um, they're on the screen there, but I'll leave them up for a second or two. Um, so what have you done in terms of mapping your place? Uh, what do you use for a base map if you have already started? How does the size of a one place study affect the ability to map the community? And how can you map the inhabitants of your place over time? So perhaps a, a couple of questions for us to consider and discuss. Right, thank you very much, Kirsty. Shall I leave those up in the background so that we can talk talk yes, over them rather than seeing me? <laughs> I'm still trying to. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you okay. fine. Everything's working now. Fine. Finally, um, <clears throat> I'm still trying to um, define my place. Okay. And I've been. It's in Ireland. Northern Ireland, and I've been using the um, OS maps, um, which I have um, what they call the Discovery series, um, which are I think one to fifty thousand. I'm not. I can't remember quite the scale. Anyway, it's quite large, um, and I'm having trouble because. While I can get the boundaries of the town lens, um, and I want to do two abutting town lens, um, I can't find yet anything that helps me place the different farms and uh, where the people lived. And it's it's not a densely populated area, um, so. It, it, you know, I should be able to find something, but I haven't yet. So that's where my dilemma is right now, because I want to make sure that I get the boundaries set for my place that encompasses the whole area that I want to to study. So that's where so, I am. So Kathleen, does the Ordnance Survey map not show townland boundaries on it then? Uh, not I'm all, not... no, not all of them. I guess some new, some do, right. um, but um, they're they're 
they're just a bit vague. I mean, they do give uh, road names, so that helps, um, especially if you manage to get someplace that's at a crossroads. And if you can find a description of places that are, you know, X number of miles from, you know, someplace. But um, so far, no, I'm not finding, you know, I've read a, a reference that said that there were, that there was a new set of um, OSNI, Ordnance Survey of Northern Ireland, um, maps that had on the back of them the townland boundaries. My sets don't have that. I have about five sheets that I got when I was in Ireland um, and they don't have townland boundaries on them. But there's supposed to be a set somewhere that does. <laughs> and if I could find the sheet number and, and find that particular map it might help. But they, they're, it's, it's a case of trying to take the boundaries that you find online and transpose them to the, to the map that I have. I'd rather just get a new map that has them on them if I can find one. <laughs> that sounds like a jolly fine plan. <laughs> what is your place, Kathleen? Um, there are two townlands. One is called um, East, East List Lap, and the other is called Colion. Could you spell C that? C-U-L-L-I-O-N. Okay. And um, they 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 run together, you know, and you'll f often find the two names put together in descriptions and things. So um, they're very connected. I mean, I'm I'm not an expert on on Irish mapping or places, but as I understand it, a town the townlands are going to be within a parish, aren't they? Um, yes. Have, if I can show you this, hold on. Ooh, no, that doesn't. Ah. I'm going to not blue box so that you can go ahead and show something, Janet. Well, I was trying to, and I'm not sure if I've quite got the hang of it. Okay, you've, you've got the wrong screen. Yeah, um, okay. Do that, and so then it goes into the Hangout. So. Right, so I don't want to do that. What do I want to do? Um, press the green thing, and I've got an option, full screen. Oh, wait a minute, I know what I need to do. Does that work? Let's see. Yes, that's exactly yes. right. Okay. <laughs> so that's the, the Northern Ireland Record Office site, which seems to suggest that you can find out what parish the townland is in. Um, and I would guess that the parish boundaries are shown on the Ordnance Survey map. They certainly are in, in England, Wales, and Scotland. Um, yes. It's a sort of dotted line of, of some kind. That will give you the parish boundary. Let me, let me just grab one and I'll describe to you what's on there. For anyone who has not seen them, okay, this is what oh, they look gosh, like. No, that, does, that does look different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they come in sheets. You'll see the big sheet number on. Yeah, here. yeah. Okay. They come in sheets, and it's called the Discoverer series, and it's one to fifty thousand scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this one happens to be for Armagh, in case anybody's interested. Um, and they do. Let me see. I do not see the, um, not on these, they don't have the parish marks. Right. You kind of just have to go on the area that you're searching for. Mm -hmm. So and in the key, what sheet they are on. In the key, there isn't a, a notation for different boundaries then. Um, because there certainly is on the, the rest of Britain. They don't have, they have an index which gives you the sheet number. They have a, a grid reference system to explain the grid and boundaries. They have uh, international, county, uh, LGD, 
<laughs> no idea. I'm not sure what LGD Legend? is. Legend? Something. That's no, Legend, I thought, but okay, go ahead. No, it's L. G D okay. separate um, like an local government district. Okay, there ah, you go. Yeah. Very, Very good. Go. So that might be the um, that would be some kind of administrative right, like, council yeah. thing, mm -hmm. rather than a you want a, a more of a church thing, don't you, for historic? Right, and then but they the, have well, even civil, but they well, have yeah, the, civil would do it? the county mm -hmm. and the national forest, etc. But they do not mm -hmm. have. Um, Parishes. Oh, now, have you gone on to something like OpenStreetMap to see if anyone in any of those areas is mapping your part? Because I'm I'm looking at C U L L I O N Cullion. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. um, in um, and it lists you know that it's the name, and then there's something for a, a townland and administrative body and the rest of it. And it looks like someone is mapping there, but they've they've mapped areas that are coming up upon your place <laughs> but not your place it's it's got a big um, boundary around it actually and what um, is this called this called is called open street? street map and it's all together o p e n s t r e e t map.org okay. and the reason that i mention this is and i was going to ask kirsty and janet because they'll probably know about this if you use something like ordnance survey or google maps and you add to it, you know, you put your own information in and you layer it and all of that, aren't there restrictions on how you use it? Um, yeah. And I'm wondering about that because OpenStreetMap, one of the beauties of that is you can take that information and then do anything you want with it and they're open source so they don't care what you do with it. It's and a, is I'm it under sure. like a common? Um, it's Creative Commons and there's a whole Commons. explanation about it but they're, they're mapping all over the place, all over the world supposedly and doing this that particular way because they are concerned about, you know, either Google or ordinance or whoever this is being concerned about their ownership and I'm just wondering has that even come into things or if you've been drawing them you won't have that problem but how does it work? No, no I, I didn't know about that site. I have looked at some of the ones, there's one I think it's called Geograph that yeah. people are photographing mm -hmm. um, the survey maps the actually. UK and Ireland. Right and I've, get, I've got a lot of photos from there that's it's great. Mm -hmm. and certainly there is there is very very strict copyright on ordnance survey maps people are mm. quite paranoid even about using a little small section out of them mm -hmm. um, I have just found something else that looked useful but it appears to be not available at this, at this current time um, <laughs> isn't that always the case <laughs> isn't that always the case yes hold on we will bring it up all right, and what Irish you all need to do, you're, you're do, yes, that's the right screen to share. Um, the most important map collection ever published. The Irish right. townland maps are packed with detail. Um, and then it says, when the maps are available again, we will contact you. We apologize for any inconvenience. <laughs> However, it does talk about printed maps and research maps on CD-ROM as opposed to online map browsing so um, whether that's something to have a look at in more detail they seem to be very very large scale which would be brilliant Kirsten mm -hmm. may I ask a question on this? Yes, Does whether I'll know the answer Kim remains to be seen but I'll try <laughs> so, so my little Brant and Clavelli probably rivals your Tetcot to, you know <laughs> So I've got, if I, I can get a map and I've got all, you know, three streets uh -huh. on it. Um, but what I'm wondering is, um, can I just start with, like, I have a lot of detail from, say, the 1845 Ties map. And an awful lot of the villages is, is very similar uh, to that. There's obviously been some houses added, but, but the, it's, a, it's a quite stable uh, community. Can I use just a um, a drawing, uh, my own drawing, uh, you know, or, or trace of that map to do this work on, or do I need yeah, a, like an open street map? No, no. I mean, when when I was saying about my initial map, when I say it's a rudimentary sketch, I literally mean it's a sketch. It's not drawn over any kind of map. 
at all to start off with. So what I started off with, Kim, was literally hand drawing it, naming the properties because some of them don't even have a name on the front of them. Heaven alone knows how the postman manages to deliver any mail there. But <laughs> but I literally went along and then I can link that with all my census data from way back and track the properties through the censuses. So I haven't at the moment utilized any of those maps to actually put that on top of. I just use the it other one I thought, The other one I thought of was just using um, the Google satellite view. Sure. And then mm -hmm. just um, maybe maybe tracing on top of that view, and then I could even get you know the current houses and everything because mm -hmm. uh, okay that that's what I was thinking about. And then you just then you take what the mapping notation that we've seen in destinations, and you can just start applying that to that basic map you have. Is you didn't show us Kirsty your picture of Tetcot. No, it's I, I haven't even scanned it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's literally pen and paper. Oh, you Let me can take hold this off it so you can actually see me. There you go. I'm back. <laughs> but um, no, it's it's literally pen and paper. It's well, not even okay. that pencil and paper. So it's not scanned in or anything. It's just an A3 paper uh, sheet, sheet, a couple of sheets of paper that are in folders. So it's and then you're just adding these notations to that A3 sheet of paper. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so with the um, community mapping notation that Richard's devised, it's brilliant actually just having the map that I've got because I can walk around the village now and say, oh, okay, actually I can see a, you know, a landmark miles away and there's right. a sign that actually, there's a symbol on there that shows how you can draw that that's, that's there or you know, if, if your view is obscured, there's one of the um, signs that you can actually show that the view is obscured, so it might be by a property or by, uh, well, there's not very many hills in that area, but it, it could be that. And when you're doing that, you saw it applied in Bristol to current development planning. Yeah. Um, what are you in, for, when you're walking around Tetcot looking looking at stuff, what, 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 what perspective are you coming from? What are you trying to... I'm trying to do it so that eventually it will be in a position that I can actually pass it on to somebody else. So my vision is in the end I'll end up with something that's in in design or something like that that's you know in a software package that I can actually put it all together so that people who have ancestors from Techcot that live in Australia or New Zealand or whatever um, can actually see what it's like by looking at my map. And are you layering the maps? Are you, because I know you, you all have all of this information from various censuses, are you doing something like this is what it looked like in 1880, this is what it looked like in 1900, you know, are you assigning to the homes that are there or maybe the buildings at the time, are you assigning who the families were or what kind yeah. of detail? Yeah, I mean it's, the thing is with, with mine is mine's probably quite different because it's not change very much in terms of the physical buildings at all. They're still the same. The manor house has been there since 1500 and heaven knows what. There aren't any new properties apart from one small close that's been added. That's it mm -hmm. over the years. So actually for me it's more mapping the individuals and showing people what it looks like because that hasn't changed very much at all. But the individuals in fact, some of those haven't changed very much either. But <laughs> <laughs> some of the some of the families have been in the same house for donkey shonks. But um, but no, the the property use has changed. So as I was saying at the top, you know about the the schoolhouse is still there, the pub is still there, but it's not a pub anymore, and it's this actual structure is still on the outside looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But really, there's just one small close in Techcot that's been added. And the rest is exactly as it probably would have looked like in 1881. Okay. And that, that's something that I wondered about too because my area is totally rural. Um, so there won't be any businesses or anything. There, there will be the occasional school or chapel or church. Um, but that's, that's about it. And I, I had looked at first as doing the parish, um, which is called Kappa. 
and it's a very old parish. Um, and I found online that there's actually a Kappa Historical Society, and oh, I've made brilliant. and I've made contact with them, um, partic particularly one fellow who happened to have ancestors in some of the townlands where my ancestors lived, and so we've struck up a, a conversation. But Kappa is just it's rather large, and I thought. To start with that, right off the bat, was just too much. It's just too oh, much. Oh, I agree, to Kathleen. On. Yeah, what I was saying, start small. So I wanted to start with, um, I wanted to start with an area where I have, I had ancestors that I that are a total brick brick wall for me. I cannot make any connections, and and find out you know anything about them so I thought if I try and map the whole area record all the people see what connections I can make within that community that maybe it might help me you know with that part of my right down that wall yeah quick question Kathleen is is your are your two small places what I would call you know a subset of that larger place that is Kappa yes is that what you mean have yes. you thought about asking the historical society or asking the, the school in the area to work with you on mapping those particular places I could ask as a my, project <laughs> right yeah um, unfortunately their focus and this is this is very funny actually if it wasn't so tragic um, <laughs> their focus is on a small townland in Kappa and the reason being is that's where the oldest church was located mm -hmm. um, this church is you know quite well known apparently in Ireland and um, in fact the bell from this church which goes way way back in history is now in Dublin um, because they wanted to preserve it and they sent it to a historical you know something in in Dublin so they're focusing their uh, research on the townland of Dunmullen which is where my grandfather came from <laughs> so that's that's it's the one I decided not to do Dunmullen because I knew a lot about the people there mm -hmm. and I thought I'll go and do something that I don't know that much about and now it turns out that the historical society is basing everything on Dunmullen <laughs> oh. because of the but um, my correspondent has said that um, he's gonna, I'm going to send him what I know of the families and he's going to try and talk to the people in the society and see if anybody knows anything about my families and and that kind of thing so I'll just offer to share what I you know come up with as well mm -hmm. so. be sure to ask him about available mapping yes okay. <laughs> they, should, they should know what maps are available for that area I would have thought right yes and if there are any directories um, throughout time because a lot of times I know that when I went up to play Cove they had these directories the farm directory and then yes. the rural directory that they put out about every four years and they had some great hand-drawn maps in there and so that's a really good way to see what it was like in you know 1880 1900 you know what they've added what what's changed that type of thing that was very helpful has anybody used the uh property ads in the papers to figure out what new building has uh, taken place say in the 20th century that I was thinking of trying to focus I don't have a lot I'm kind of like you guys you know a few new closes but that's about it but uh, but I thought I, I well, should see them somewhere advertised. Sometime, sometimes when I do a search on my townland or something I will come up with ads for new homes and I, I kind of glance at them and see if there's anything you know mentioning you know uh, historical placement or anything like that but I haven't been so lucky yet um, Janet could you speak a little bit about um, I know that you've written 
you know, one section of your book involves mapping. And I know that something else I happened to see online was something we don't have over here, and I wish we did. I think it's called Acorn Clubs, um, <laughs> where, where they get the children involved. And yes. there were some really interesting things about, you know, walking a neighborhood or walking your school or, you know, that area and, and making up maps, you know, just the hand-drawn maps. And I thought that was a real interesting start. You know, if, you know, OpenStreetMap is great if you're already, you know, ready to play with, you know, mm -hmm. online things and download them and work with certain files but this this had some really clever ideas in it I thought and I was just wondering um, if you could talk a little bit about resources for mapping certainly in the UK because that's where a number of the studies are and then maybe if Alex had some information on New Zealand that would be great well Alex it's not going to matter because your study is in England right I was say that, but yeah. you're gonna, you're gonna have to in England again <laughs> Well, certainly, I know Kim mentioned the tithe map, and actually, when I did my base map for my Bucks Mills study, I used the, well, I had to use two tithes maps because it is a hamlet, but it's in two historic UK parishes, which basically means it's two different tithe maps, which were two different scales. Um, but I did use those to create my own little sketch map, and I, I really just basically traced them. I mean, this is clearly, I mean, one of Kirsty's questions was how is it different if you've got a big place and I think at the moment we're talking small place and I think if you've got a huge place the sorts of things that we're suggesting are going to be a lot more difficult and perhaps you would just have to choose a part of your large place I will try my now I've worked out how to do this screen sharing thing <laughs> I will see what I can do um, can you see that? Excellent. Yes. Um, <laughs> and could you just zoom it for us, if that's um, possible? That's that little. Um, oh no, no I, I've got it. Bottom. I've got it, but you won't. Obviously, you won't get all Perfect. of it. Um, there's about 30 cottages, and this is the tracing. So either side of that main road was the two different tithe maps. Mm -hmm. And this is all the cottages that I feel were ever there. And what's certainly one of the things that I look out for when I'm walking a place is does this house look like it was in the past a chapel or a school or something like that can I see evidence of two cottages being joined together or what was uh, what was one now being two uh, and then I try and date them if I can using documentary evidence and architectural styles and all sorts of different things so this is I mean this is a, a one place study that's fairly advanced and I've been doing for a very long time and because it's such a tiny place I've got quite a long way with it so I've tried as you see to sort of scribble on here um, just to indicate where various buildings have gone now like in the sea or burnt down um, and there's one that was a shop there um, so that's where I've come from with that but that was certainly me tracing the tithe maps and then walking up and down and seeing what wasn't wasn't there now but like Kirsty's these things haven't actually changed very much, um, so it does I've make it. You know, something quite similar. Uh, I might, if I could, just try and and uh, share it. But I've never shared before either. And, so. and why you're sharing? I just have a quick question with that for Janet. Is do you also take pictures of these places, yes. or you know, uh, chat up the people who live there? Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have um, my policy is to to hide and put the camera on zoom and and run away quickly. Um, I have a friend who accompanies <laughs> me, whose policy is to bang on the door. And, and say, do you mind? Do you mind us taking a picture of your house? And then it turns out he went to school with them. And two hours later, I get away. And usually, he's in the meantime promised oh that gosh. I will provide them with a complete residential history of their of their <laughs> property. So it's not always the best plan. But but yes, okay. no, I, I take pictures at the same time. That's excellent. Okay. I go for the middle of that. I don't knock on the yeah. doors, but I don't hide. And then I just get accosted by people who say, yes. "Why are you taking a photograph of my cottage?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. I, had a, I had a, one of my cousins from New Zealand did that when she went to Ireland um, and she found this little nest of you know areas farms where our ancestors lived and um, she she did go up and and talk to people all over the place she said she, she said they were just so I mean they're wonderful the Irish when you when you go and say you're looking for where your ancestors are they just bend over backwards mm -hmm and um, they did this and it ended up that they had one little outbuilding 
that was part of the old farm that our ancestors had and she got a picture of that and that was about oh, the best she could brilliant. do but, but it was wonderful talking to the people because otherwise she would never have known that that little place that little sh you know shamble of a of a shed had anything to do with the farm mm. okay Kim wow I Kim that's amazing you. yes now I've got something that's quite similar to Janet wow. No, and, no, Kim um, is so not no, no, similar no. to mine. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> superior to mine. <laughs> could you zoom it and then walk us through it? That would be great. Uh, could I zoom in on it? Let's see um, here. Control plus plus if you're on Windows. Something like that. Look at Excellent. you. Excellent. Better. Excellent. Very oh, good. Wow. Okay. And That's then, amazing. Um, let's say, uh, well, let me just find the one I was on. because Oh, well, there's the old post office. So <clears throat> I had <sighs> traced this from the tithe map and um, taking the, uh, the tithe uh, assessments, the owners and tenants. And then um, I had a contact in the village who helped me to map these things to their modern names. Now, oh, this wow. map is mainly what's in the tithe map rather than any of the new places because I know like right up here uh, there's some new houses and this is the village hall now. So there's things that would be in the modern one and what I'm trying to do is now think hard about how um, would I apply the um, mapping notation, mm. you know, uh, and build on on this kind of understanding because to a great extent the village is very similar, um, mm. you know. I mean, like this one down here, there's an open field now instead of that that particular modern name, open image. field. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but. Um, but anyway, that's what I was. Um, I'm going to try and come off this screen share now. Um, that's brilliant, Kim. That's am, what am I off the screen? Is that, no, but if you just click on your green screen share again, oh, it should it. bring okay. it off. Perfect. Okay, how what did you put that, that together, what? Kim? <laughs> Sorry, <What's that? laughs> Sorry we we're saying the it. same thing anyway. <laughs> how did you put that together? Um, what program or how did you work with it? Oh, it was. Uh, it was. Um, I, I did it on my website. It was um, I had traced it. I took the tithe maps, and um, Kirsty, I also have actually I had three tithe maps, and to get them on CD at 20 pounds a tithe map, I couldn't believe it. But I have two detached parts of my parish, and then they give the map that shows the part in between. So so anyway, but I um, took those and and traced those and made that map just to the village. Um, Mm -hmm. Not um, Kathleen, the the widespread farms, because my parish is eight thousand acres, and it's you know got you know about like one person per you know <laughs> six inches of map or something. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, and I just traced it, and then I um, I kind of uh, just scanned that and and put it online and put it into my website and uh, used a, a a plugin that's actually. You know the sort of things you use to put captions on photos? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's basically a cap, you know, where you can write the names of people on your on your photos and stuff. You can label photos. I don't know photos. what does it. I know what you, I know what you mean, yeah. but I don't know how to do so it. So there's a little plug-in for WordPress that will allow you to do okay. that. And I, so I kind of treat it as just a picture and put them on. But now what I'm really interested in is thinking about, okay, now I've got this mapping notation that I've seen and destinations and I'm trying to think okay where do I go with this how do I make use of this I've got some basic maps and I've got the bigger one that shows all the farms you know at, at a you know at a at a higher scale but um, um, what do I do with that where do I go with that <laughs> do you have in your area Kim enough of those items that are listed in those notations because the one thing I noticed was you know if you were in a farm area you could have all of those notations for trees and hills and mountains or whatever and that's great but you know that would be it if you're in a in a town you'd have the school and the and the houses and the whatever else. so they could be two very different things depending on what kind of a place you're mapping and so I was wondering do you have a combination do you have farming and a village, so to speak, you know, or or yeah. a city or a whatever you want to call it. Little village okay. with um, a couple of schools that are no longer used, and a church that is, and village hall, and and things like that. 
And so then do you want to blow them up? You know, you, you have a great map there, but do you want to do exactly what they do with the ordinance survey, which is, you know, put it into quadrants or something so that you could go into more detail on your place? Um, I, think, I think I'd like to do that. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense to me because you can, you know, I would for that map I was trying to show the the, the nucleus of the village on one screen, mm -hmm. um, but now I want to really get in detail. And there are things like a a little village green and the war memorial and you know trees and and footpaths and and all those sorts of things around that village. So so uh, yeah, I guess I blow it up and. Um, and um, then try and find a way. I, I guess, Kirsty, right now all we can really do is kind of draw those things on, on those maps, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, ideally, when the city design group that are working on the Bristol project at the moment, when their software is kind of at a certain point, there, there may be a potential to roll out but I think at the moment it's they're focused on Bristol it's the city design group is based at the city council offices it's with the planning department there it's it's really you know they're, they're not willing to to look at wider um, wider work on it at the moment but they didn't rule it out when I spoke to them it's just that that's their focus for now um, but has anybody really, here has go anybody on. on this uh, um, talk uh, tried to apply some of that notation. I would just love to see a couple sample maps. Yeah. You know, with people trying these things out, maybe we could put up some place where if people tried them out, we could share them somewhere or something yeah, like that. And On the could, website somewhere, and maybe. A yeah. Question, Kirsty, is could yeah. you know? I don't know how they're how they're allowing us to use it. You know, is it allowing us to see something? Is it allowing us to draw something? Or could you make tiles of those individual things and put them on, you know, in a PDF or something on your own map? How they're allowing us to use what the no the notation? The notations. Mm -hmm. We're allowed. To, we've been allowed to publish it to the society to our members, so in destinations. And then, as long as the copyright is recognised, as is in the top um, mm -hmm. right hand corner, I think he, we even included that obviously in destinations. Um, as long as it's it's yeah, what do you call it? Cited. Mm -hmm. um, it's fine to use it. He's keen for it to be used, but it's just to recognise the fact that obviously it's work that he's done with the students uh, on his urban planning course. He's keen to have contact with people, he's, both him and uh, Peter Insull, who works for City Design Group and is in the Bristol City Council. They're very keen to, to support this kind of work. It's just the fact that the software that they're designing at the moment, they're not they're not you know in a position to kind of roll it out in a more wide sort of community. Right. But well, yeah, then one we, thing you might yeah. want to think about, Kim, and and this might be something we play with because I I had looked at the open street map and and all of that is is to make tiles of those notations mm -hmm. that you put on your map when you've got the larger quadrant so something can actually fit on because if they're too small you won't know why you had them there. Um, and then as long as the citation to those tiles which is the notation and you'd have the key or the legend um, mm -hmm. that that should work. Um, so we make just kind of like little clip art out of it. Uh, right. Out of those, uh, and yeah. when, you're, when you're walking it you could just draw the number <laughs> that goes with it so you're not drawing a tree you know everywhere you go or something but if you if you drew number one number seven number nine and then you assign those tiles the number and put them on your drawing that might be one way to approach it right. um, it's always hard to go backwards from computer generated <laughs> stuff to the drawing but once you walk it um, I just walked in Longview yeah. the other day just to kind of get an idea and I thought oh each of these benches around the lake has a plaque on it you know, something I never noticed before until you're really acting like a detective. So the thing I thought was useful and I asked at the grade school was if the kids would be interested at all in doing that as a project. You know, they know their own homes, they know their neighbors, they want to put their school up there, you know, and, and they find things that you wouldn't even think of. Um, so it was kind of interesting. They were like, well, that would be a great project because then the math teacher was going to say, what's the distance, you know, had all these other ideas to use with it after. Yeah, it was really interesting just going around for the first time time because I managed to amazingly randomly just hook up with two people who'd already used the notation 
and so walked around with the two of them and me. So I, and I don't know how it worked. I just sat next to them in the seminar in the morning. They happened to be in the same group, and I just stood with them, and we got paired or you know put in a three together when we went round, and it was brilliant because they'd already done it. So they were able to kind of go and look over there or oh and look at that and it's all sorts of things like the levels of the ground you know and how how the the pavement changes because in Bristol it changed changed from cobble to a tarmac surface so it's even looking at the changes in the surface from one street to the next or some of the fascias on the on the fronts of the buildings were really different and I probably wouldn't have picked those up not being from Bristol and not having used it so it's really really useful so I definitely I recommend feeling, doing it with other people. I had a feeling looking at the notation Kirsty. Mm -hmm. I think I recollect something about something like roof lines and the like yeah. and I thought I think I'd, it would make me look at things very differently and notice different things but what I probably didn't get into the detail yet I, I haven't tried it is things like like in Bratton Clavelli, oh boy, the hedge, the banks along the lanes and stuff are really, really quite spectacular in places. You know, mm -hmm. I think about like 2,000 years spectacular or something. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> but um, I, I don't, didn't know because that the notation had really been developed for more of a Bristol or a town setting. I didn't know if it was. How, how it felt for a more rural area? No, I don't think so. I mean, from from the study, I mean, there's a project report. They've done it in quite a few different places, and some of them are more rural, some of them are more built up. But there are some blocks on the notation where you can fill in your own. So if there's something that you think, I need to put that, then make your own notation. And I know that Richard's added stuff along the road when someone's gone, oh, this would be really useful. And he's included that in the next copy. I think that's copyrighted 2013, but they've been through many, many different versions over the years that they've been working on it for sure. So when you were actually walking it, Kirsty, with the two yeah. people who'd done it before, were they drawing those wonderful little notations or, or no, did they have me. some kind of cheat sheet? <laughs> oh, but you were drawing. They, they I was drawing, yeah. Okay. And there's actually a picture of me in the flipping project report. <laughs> <laughs> drawing the blooming signs. I didn't manage to avoid the cameras then either, obviously. But no, we had two different colour pens because you have, I think it's red for one and green for the other. I can't remember now, but definitely two different colours. Um, and they're on the notation um, as well. So it was sort of one person held the pens, the other person held the map and did the drawing, and the other person sort of said, oh, draw that. So it was definitely a team effort. How large, because it, it made it sound like there was a big group that all got together kind of crowdsourcing. No, and then, no, no, or you all um, walked it, did you each have your particular area to do and how much, yeah. how much did you get done in a morning or an afternoon? Not very much. <laughs> we had about an hour, I'm just trying to find it because I actually printed the report off here. Um, with my awful photograph in it. Um, I, you probably won't be able to see this so well, but I'll just pop it up to the screen there. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. a small, move it that way okay. a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's just a very small area, but it probably took the best part of an hour to do that small area properly. The scale, obviously, on the map that I'm putting up to the camera there it is much smaller, um, so that it could be produced in there. But it takes a long time because you, you're not walking at a normal pace, you're walking a couple of paces and then going, oh, 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 and just looking all around and noting down everything that you see. So it does take a long time. We had, I think, maybe eight groups in the session that I did, and there was another eight groups, and we created, I think, 16 big sheets of A3 that were then mapped together. So mm -hmm. by the end of it, we had this big pin board with everything sort of all put together. Um, of everyone's work so we did a whole section of Bristol in those two hours but there were probably about 30, 40 people mm -hmm. doing it, something like that. Okay. Um, speaking of, when we were speaking of sharing things and getting other people to um, uh, give you information, has anybody tried, there's a website and I, I can't remember the exact name of it, it's something to do with encounters and what it is is a mapping site 
and they they actually opened it up and, and made some special um, options for genealogists because they found that it was so popular with them. Mm. And what you can do is go and input um, specific points on a map with the information of what what happened there, what you know, what it was, um, anything like that. And you can keep the map private, or you can open it up to the public. Okay. And then anybody that you know that comes on the site can also make notations and put a pin in the map and say, well, this was so and so, and this was, you know, this school, and you know, I remember when, or something like that. Mm -hmm. well, and right. and counted. Yeah, it was. It's something to do with encounters. I'll have to look it up and, and I'll pass just it on. Encounters, and it says a dating yeah. online dating agency. <laughs> <laughs> if you just use encounters, you get a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if I do you know that. Find that link and put that on the forum. That would be yeah, much prettier. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it not encountersdating.co.uk. <laughs> I'm sure you're that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say that today uh, Google introduced or at least brought forward a number in their map gallery. Uh, you know, they have maps you can you can type in for your search, you know, the country or the time period, and they're using David Rumsey's maps, but they're also using a, a number of other. And so they've just kind of rolled that out again. They kind of let it linger for a while or you know, whatever but it was back up today I noticed and so that might be something to check out your areas are our places are going to be much smaller but they'll give you a big picture certainly over time to look at as well okay and the website is uh, U, just the letter U mm -hmm. encounter dot M E ah U encounter dot M E so you encounter you. me, yes. <laughs> literally. Mm -hmm. I know it's um, getting late, but there was one of the, one of the questions you put up at the beginning. I was really yeah. hoping we'd get just a few minutes on. Um, it's a, did you get any chance while you were with the group uh, to discuss handling uh, mapping over time? No, not really, because what they're doing is mapping now. Yeah. You know, mapping what the community looks like now. So have you no, had any thoughts on that? Um, I don't so, have anything in terms of online thoughts. No, I mean, I've, I like what you've done in, on your map, but I I really want to try and find something that maps it so we can have 1841, 1851, 80, or even before that with the tithe map, you know, who, who occupied it in whenever the tithe map was done for that particular area and actually yeah. document it through and electoral rolls or whatever and actually have that linked but I don't know how to at the moment and my, may, maybe someone who I know who's good at software programming might design something. <laughs> <laughs> if I talk nicely. <laughs> I don't know but it's something something that would be really, really useful. Um, mm. To, to anyone who's doing this kind of study, you know, community, heritage groups, whatever, um, to be able to look at the changes in individuals over time, because there is nothing at the moment that can actually map it for us, apart from your know, good old pencil and paper, I think. Yeah. Something that, good. <laughs> something that you can use on a on a bigger scale. It isn't any use for just looking at a very small area, but I've used it to. Um, record where in migration has come from into my place and that's Steve Archer's gen map which is only British based unfortunately but you can well, create little dots on the, the map same. and this sort of thing we're losing Kim there oh yeah, yeah. I didn't hear what Kim said no <laughs> You can do the same thing with, and we don't know. <laughs> we'll have to find out. <laughs> so you use GenMap for that, yes, yes. and that's it's, UK it's, based. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But it is definitely. It's oh, you can do the same thing with um, Matt. Oh, <laughs> we want you. We can do the same thing with something, but it cuts out at the vital can point. You, <laughs> You can need you to type, type it in the chat? <laughs> type it, Kim. <laughs> I have used family. Map My it's Family Tree. Tree yeah. for a worldwide map basis. Yeah. It's got a filter, and you can just change it to whatever date range, and I use that for a lot of mapping and migration. Okay. That's 
something to keep in mind. Now, we have a number of people who um, have been watching and I've been trying to kind of keep up with both the YouTube side as well as the community. Um, the one comment that I would make is if you are not in the community, um, what happens is we put this notice out to everyone, so we, we put it out publicly and we put it out to community. And if you're not a member of the community, um, I enter as um, the Society for One Place Studies, you see that little brown item up there, but I enter as that so that the recording can go onto our YouTube website. So if you're not in the community, I'm not able to invite you from here. And that might be the problem some people have had, not all of them. But if you're joining on the public side, sometimes I can't get you in. So we're going to play a little bit more with Google to make sure that next month we're able to get the people who are in the community as well as public into the panel. I would really ask you, if you want to be on the panel you know mention that in the comment section the day before two hours before and I'll make sure I have you on the invite list I actually have to go in and in invite people individually you know put each of your names in so it really helps to have you in the community because then I recognize the pictures um, I guess between Kirsty and Janet, if you want to go ahead and wrap up, if you have any comments, we'll try and put, well, we won't try, we will, put on the, our, probably as a blog summary within the next week, any of the websites that we mentioned so that you could find them that, you know, we've talked about today, as well as I would say, once we've put that summary up, go ahead and post comments in that blog post. Mm -hmm. If you have any sites that you would suggest to us, or if you know of a program that we haven't heard of, that would be great to know. So now I'm going to turn it over to Kirsty first to see if there's anything else you wanted to add, and then Janet, you can close out for us. I don't think there's an enormous amount more to add. I think the crucial part really is to have a look at destinations and look at the community mapping notation and have a go. Uh, you know, I've got a very individual study in terms of I am the only one that does it, <laughs> that being the definition of individual. Um, but it's it's very interesting when you start walking around, even now, when people do actually know who I am and recognize me when I go down there people still want to know what you're doing and actually do want to engage with what you're doing even though they might not want to put the effort in you know longer term they'll walk around with you with the map and kind of go oh so what are you doing and you know and it's that kind of collaboration and I think that's the crucial part of what we're trying to do as one place study is so I'd say just have a go get a even if it's just a sketch that you do like I did to start off with just draw out the street with a wiggle where the wiggle is on the street that's what I did um, start labeling it all up you know you don't need necessarily a base map just give it a go sketch it grab a couple of A3 sheets of paper or whatever your version of A3 is a big bit a piece of wallpaper <laughs> and just get drawing uh, you know have a go and then at least you're starting to map it and you can build it up change it tweak it as you go around okay That's all for me great right. and Janet Right, well, thank you very much, Kirsty, and thank you for those of us who've joined in on the panel or listening in in real time or, or later on. I suspect what we might also do is perhaps open up a, a discussion on the forum about this topic, and then people can contribute in that way, and I think that would be quite a, quite a good idea. So we hope to see you all again next month. Um, I complete, completely have no idea what we're talking about next month, but I'm sure I should have. But we will be giving you all the the usual notifications in good time so hopefully you'll be able to join us then thank you very much everybody good night good morning good afternoon <laughs>